Cool. Uh, welcome, everyone. I am definitely a bit nervous, like a full packed room. <laughs> so I think today we will be focusing on mainly understanding how we can learn Kubernetes security and cloud native security. Of course, there is a lot of buzz around, like at least the booths place, right? Like a lot of people trying to sell the security tools, right? <laughs> Uh, a bit about me, definitely I'm not from any company, so don't think that I'm not selling any tool here. So I work as an independent security consultant, uh, primarily around Kubernetes and cloud native space. I've been past experience uh, basically training to teach and uh, train people around the bunch of conferences like Black Hat, DEF CON, Usenix and some of the others. Uh, apart from that, I've been trying to commit uh, a community drive back by giving some open source projects. Like one of them today we're going to see is called Kubernetes Goat, which is a fun place to learn Kubernetes security. Yes, apart from that, I keep trying to learn new things. So that's why you see me never ending learner. So feel free to like stop by and say if something I say is wrong, right? I'm still learning new things. So with that, Let's quickly look at the agenda, what we're going to do like for at least next 30 minutes or so. Uh, we will start thinking about why exactly we need Kubernetes or cloud native security, because there is a lot of people going through all this incubation process and the, the graduation and security assessments and stuff, right? But uh, definitely we kind of see from the real world experience, I've been doing at least hacking of Kubernetes cluster for almost five to six years, quite early days of that option. Uh, we will see some of the roadmap, how these kind of can hacks map back to real world clusters. And hopefully that is one part I'm a bit nervous. I used to do always live hacking because of some constraint I had to record. <laughs> so let's see some hacking of how all the stages of Kubernetes, like from gaining from completely no, no visibility to cluster takeover, which means different parts of hackers life in the Kubernetes, right? So we will also see some of the mappings uh, in the real world frameworks like OWASP top 10 uh, Mitre attack framework if you're someone coming from the security background, right? And also we will see how you can go back and try learning these things so that you kind of hack your clusters basically to secure them, right? So pretty much that's it. So let's start with why exactly we need Kubernetes and cloud native security, right? So I just wanted to start a bit of survey, maybe not like a very high level, uh, just a simple form of like, okay, raise the hands if you say like, oh, that is the thing which you are doing. How many of you run like pretty much in the production, like the, the bleeding edge or the newest, the Kubernetes versions, like maybe 1.26 or 2.5 at least? Ah, quite a lot. Cool, so how many of you at least running the production workloads in Kubernetes? That's amazing, that's awesome, <laughs> right? So when we started like uh, back in, to take you back history, like in 2016, I started learning about Kubernetes and trying to come from security background, completely the way it is changed, uh, and we will see some of them like how it evolved, right? I'm really sorry if anyone from security team, I don't know how many of you from security background are doing security work in the companies? Ah, okay, sorry, trying to like basically blame you, but yeah, don't mind. <laughs> So some of the reasons actually, right, why we wanted to discuss is one of the biggest challenge we have seen in the security industry is lack of knowledge because most Kubernetes and new concepts is not even understandable by security teams, right? How do you product if you don't understand the technology, right? So if you look at this example, right, so there is a basically cluster got hacked and you go to a security team, oh, we got hacked by some Monero crypto or like whatever the crypto mining. They said, okay, go ahead and delete the pod or maybe bring a new node, right? So if you look at Kubernetes, you can't just go delete a pod or fix a node, right? It's not how you gonna go fix the security issues. So we kind of see this uh, uh, just definitely not to laugh. Uh, as I said, I don't want to definitely blame security teams. It's the biggest gap is we miss a lot of knowledge in the, the technology. So unless we don't understand how the systems work, definitely we can't secure them, right? So that is one of the biggest gap we have seen. The second thing is understanding the technology gap, right? So there is a ton of things coming out. If you look at the landscape, I don't think so how many of you are like at least know some of the things, tools out there within the, the CNCF landscape. It's huge, it's growing, right? So the landscape is quite heavy and uh, people can't catch up, right? So that's one of the biggest reason it's very hard to protect or like build security layers on the Kubernetes or cloud native ecosystem, right? 
then if you look at the biggest thing is the maturity right it's not at all uh, growing i mean say it's definitely growing in terms of the projects and the scope and the features think about the security right how it is evolving what kind of security road map you see from the the kubernetes or even the companies and the vendors or the tools right so this is something uh, which definitely attackers love this right like oh this is how we can leverage because this shiny object which is lying in the production workloads so another biggest thing is which i think mostly not just for security teams so they just migrated all the workloads to 1.23 there is a new release every four months of kubernetes upstream saying that oh we have new release of 1.25 why don't you migrate because a lot of bugs got patched and you need to move to the upstream right so it is not able to catch up for the at least leo or the security people even devops teams right they are like okay they have deployed they have to migrate all these changes and move on to the next thing right and what about the popular hacks like i think you might have seen like a crypto mining happening all around the world like uh, there are container escapes happening all around the world right so by the time you patch all your vulnerabilities from the, the scanners by the time you have a ton of more vulnerabilities right so there is no time to patch your all vulnerabilities uh, of like whatever the security team saying that oh there is some bugs in the, your container images right so these are some of the examples so one of the biggest reason is to improve the experience right of the like either it can be users developers or the operations teams so if you don't understand the technology basically you can't secure it that's what i say right like you need to understand to solve those problems so the question is can we do something about the kubernetes security then so yes definitely we can at least there is a lot of work done by cnci of tax security and bunch of the people around the the community which is really awesome actually like if you look at this this is one of the threat modeling i think it doesn't go with not just uh, cnci of our kubernetes anything most of the companies doing threat modeling right this is a very good start to identify what is your risk and uh, what is the security posture and what is your critical assets it can be data it can be systems and whatever right so this is just one thing right so there are better approaches which you can use to secure thing like for example attack trees again this is one of the the a project from cnc of tax security they try to showcase you what kind of layers you can map it back to kubernetes security attacks from attacker's point of view right so these are really good i mean so if you are someone adopting them and uh, improving them and uh, trying to fix your security issues at different layers and also they have a bunch of white papers and documentation but if you go back to the security teams or real world you need a practical experience right these are pretty good in the paper like how do you say that this is a theoretical vulnerability can you hack them really right that's what you have a business case okay you all saying good this is going to get container escape can you say that it is really going to happen is it happening in the real world so that is what we going to see today so we kind of look at like are these enough to start getting started with the kubernetes security right so we will look at a very simple high level something called i call attack path and some companies call it in different variations by the way cyber kill chain or kill chain or whatever the thing so we will look at a very simple attack kill path by the way definitely you can't read and understand sorry for that uh, this is a basic kill chain i can think of uh, for the kubernetes right the one thing you have to take away is there is a lot of possibilities to get into the kubernetes cluster at various layers of attacks right so we will be going at some of these attacks at different stages from completely external facing kubernetes cluster to uh, gaining initial access by hacking into the cluster from there maybe executing into the cluster maybe it can be container or pod from there how you can laterally move or escalate out of the container to node maybe node to another node another node to complete cluster takeover right or do you want to make sure your blue team doesn't want to detect or you security teams should not detect these attacks so there are way to bypass uh, so we will look at some of them and we will also see how we can laterally move which means it can be across the cluster it can be even beyond the cluster right the whole idea we wanted to do is to make some impact right so the impact could be various ways you wanted to exfiltrate the data of the cluster or you wanted to just do crypto mining or make more billing for your compute right so there can be any impact but the kill chain is a uh, pretty much similar right you have a lot of paths and a lot of possibilities right so this looks all good so we kind of a quickly look at a very simple demo i really miss doing live hacking definitely because i if i do this it takes more than 40 minutes so i had to record it and do it to x speed but i would be super happy to show you outside as well so let's go back uh oh 
let's play so i'll try to just navigate through this and uh, explain you some of the concepts what exactly i'm trying to do right so we'll start with the completely initial cluster uh, is the font uh, visible bit back set i'm really sorry i tried to do regard like with the font high but if you say something i can zoom in and try to play the video right so yeah what we are trying to do is we just looking at a pattern, uh, three node kubernetes cluster so what i'm trying to do is getting the ip addresses of the three worker nodes okay so the three worker nodes running a bunch of workloads of your production right and i'm also taking the master node ip which is basically your kubernetes api server right so as an attacker i start with this okay i don't know anything about your clusters workload i have this is the this, this is the entry point for me right so if you look at like red teams or attackers so that is what they have to get started right so let's see what they can do so i will be starting with a simple uh, nmap scan as i said most of the security knowledge is not uh, like gonna go west if because of new technology the only thing is you need to understand this technology all of your security skills still can be applicable here once you map it back okay this is a pod maybe this is a different thing right so what I'm trying to do, if you look at here closely, uh, maybe I'll just start the attack and say, so what I'm trying to do here is I'm doing a simple nmap scan on the entire range of node ports, right? If you look at the node ports of Kubernetes, which is completely exposed to outside, if there is no firewall, basically all of your API gateways, service mesh, all of these firewalls, fancy commercial vendors is get bypassed, right? completely exposing that at a node level so we have these seen these attacks in a, a bunch of engagements when i was doing consulting by the way most of these attacks you see here is come from real world hacks i try to simulate them and keep it so that you can learn so uh, if you look at them so there are a bunch of node ports exposed from the cluster as an attacker oh this looks interesting maybe there is an application so if you start looking at application they have a bunch of applications which is exposed to node pod which is completely outside of the kubernetes cluster and anyone can access on the internet without firewall without api remit leads or api gateways or anything okay as an attacker i'll just start using an application oh i found it so as an attacker as a hacker i just try to see how the application works right okay it looks like there is a simple functionality looks like a ping right so maybe i can see try giving some system commands like what i'm trying to do here is i'm just giving a, a parameter called id with the semicolon which means the unix separator right or linux separator what it means is because this application is vulnerable to like a application security attack like a remote code execution right so i'm trying to chain off attacks right so i'm using the application security vulnerability to basically do command injection in the container right so now you see this information gathering and i gained the knowledge of the systems and i was able to gain into the system right i got execution into the pod right so okay now i'm here okay i got an execution stage i have an rce i'm already in your kubernetes cluster in one of the pod or container right that's a pretty cool right isn't it for attacker's point of view so that's not enough right from me the if you look at red team or like a hacking teams so they focus on missions or goals right what is the mission for me if something i get access to the cluster admin maybe that is a goal of mine like i'll stop it there or maybe my goal is to i wanted to exfiltrate all your secrets or maybe data right so i'll based on goal approach i wanted to proceed next right so once i'm inside a node or like basically sorry pod or container so i wanted to enumerate more what can i do from there so from here you can think of like uh, the below system you see here is a hacker box which means think of this as an attacker machine and this is something i'm trying to get some information and run a bunch of commands right so what i'm trying to do is i'm getting an attacker uh, uh, box or attacker machine ip so that i can use this when i'm trying to do some payloads reversal or anything so rather than i'm keep using the shell or the application i'm trying to plant a simple reverse shell so that i get a proper shell back so that i can play and do whatever the things i want from my terminal so what i'm trying to do here is i just did a simple reverse shell i listen to the port from the container and just got the reverse shell back so now i basically have the pod access from my computer right as attacker so got cool so from there i just wanted to enumerate more what can i do more and what kind of things i can get out of the kubernetes cluster so i'll start enumerating okay what kind of kernel it is running what kind of operating system it is running container if you look at this i didn't even know it is a container or uh, the vm so i kind of looking at what kind of network interfaces are there uh, so does it really running in a container or something so i'm just looking at c groups okay looking at it is kubernetes pod right which is pretty cool like i'm inside a kubernetes container now right so from there i kind of see oh there is a lot of processes i don't think so kubernetes or container is supposed to have a lot of processes 
right? Just need to have one process serve the container. So this looks a bit shady or interesting from Adagas point of view, right? So what I do is I'll go ahead and see one of the process. Oh, this doesn't look like running in a container. It looks like from the system process, right? So maybe I have to definitely have understanding of the, the Kubernetes and the containers knowledge here. Okay, this could be dash dash PID equal to host, which means you are passing all your host processes to the container. Maybe it is required for some of the tracing tools, right? Or process monitoring tools. So these are some of the real world hacks, by the way. So we have uh, required and seen these kind of attacks when some of the tools require capsis p trace and you just need processes you can do process injection attack to even container escape right so then we also looking at what are the moon paths right so i'm trying to showcase you definitely various ways you can uh, look at attacks but definitely you don't see all of these vulnerabilities in one pod so think of these kind of possibilities in various places. So I'm also looking at uh, what kind of DNS resolutions and do we have any extra capabilities? Looking at it, we got pretty much everything, right? Capsis admin, Capnetra. So we have pretty much all the access and understanding. So once as an attacker, I enumerated all the knowledge out of the Kubernetes. So then my idea is, can I escape out of the container? Like if you look at here, I'm just using ch root because there is a file system owner from the host system, I just got escaped. So if you look at this, I just escaped out of the container to the one of the node, right? So I literally moved or like privilege escalated, if you see now from completely outside nowhere to a container, container to now node. So I'm inside a one of your worker node. So pretty much think of me like your kubelet, right? So once I'm inside your kubelet, okay, what can I do? Because that is not my goal, right? I wanted to get either cluster admin or do something more damage. So I kind of trying to see, oh, what can I do here? Oh, I have seen a bunch of images. If I am someone behind a data, maybe I'll just see if any of the pod or Docker container is landing in the nodes, I'll just steal the data and go away, right? That's my goal of the, the attack, right? So, but if someone wanted to take over the complete cluster, maybe they have further more goals, right? So I'll start looking at more. So you can also, by the way, do different ways of attacks. I just showing in another way, like using an center with uh, the uh, UPC, uh, sorry, UTC namespace. So what I'm trying to do now here is, uh, because I'm already inside one of the node, can I leverage something which is already use of Kubernetes node? So if you think about Kubernetes architecture, there is something called kubelet which is required to talk to the API server. So I'm trying to leverage the kubelet uh, configuration to mimic that as attacker, oh, I'm the kubelet, can you give me something like this? So I'm trying to use the same kubelet configuration and going and talking to the Kubernetes. So if you see kubelet, uh, kubectl get parts in the node, I'm not getting because I don't have the configuration or the credentials of the kubelet. So the configuration and uh, credentials are available in the kubelet.kubeconfig. So what I have to do is I just pass this configuration to the kubectl, like I'm just passing this kubelet configuration and just asking the API server, can you give me these parts? Or can you do this something, right? So if you look at it, pretty much we are able to get the parts, which means whatever kubelet can do the permissions, we can able to do as an attacker, right? Which means you can able to ask uh, the imperative API using like auth can I get parts, which means it will tell using that configuration and the secrets you can able to do or not. Yes, you can able to get parts. And yes, you can able to delete parts, right? So it also give dash dash list, what are the, the verbs or objectives you can do with the credentials. Pretty much you can do all of these things, right? So as I said, I've been doing for years some. Initially, there was no node admission restriction plugin, which means using this, I could have deployed another pod in another node and land on to another node, which means I literally move from one node to another node. Basically, I can completely take over your cluster, right? But uh, due to that node admission plugin, we are restricted and bounded to only one node now, right? That's a definitely good security fix, right? But attackers not gonna stop there. So they kind of see what could be possible so that I can literally move across another node. So. Uh, if you look at here, uh, basically I'm trying to show now defense evasion, which means if you are someone blue team or SOC team, same team wanted to detect me, I try to see just, can I delete their logs so that they don't detect me? Can I just delete some kind of hidden way so that they'll never see me lying there, right? So I just trying to delete some of the pod logs. So there are a bunch of ways, by the way, some of them is like removing the pod logs 
uh, are removing the container logs because these get just forwarded from your FluentD or FluentB to uh, the same tools like Splunk or ELK stack, whatever the thing, and your blue team get detected and trigger an alert, right? So one of them is that, or you can even change the configurations because you are already in the root, right? You never wanted to forward certain logs or something. So basically, you're playing God mode in the in the node level, right? So once you are inside here, there are a bunch of defense techniques. By the way, uh, evasion. This is one of them. So what I'm trying to do is now, I have now able to escape out of the container. I wanted to literally move. Okay, I um, know that I can get everything in this node, but I wanted to have access to another node where there is a sensitive workloads. It could be something like you are uh, maybe PCA workloads or something, right? So what I'm trying to do now here is, okay, I'm already inside this node, which starts end with uh, uh, something ZD, ZD. Then I wanted to get access to something like ZI, right? That is a different node in the Kubernetes, right? So what I'm trying to look at is now is, can I get the node labels, right? So if you look at, there is a, a very native feature of Kubernetes, something called uh, uh, tolerations and taints, and also node selector. As an attacker, this is where, again, as I said, you need to understand the technology to hack, because I know there is a something concept called node selector. As an attacker, I leverage the same feature, go and deploy a pod in another node where I select certain workloads. Right. So what I'm trying to do is just uh, trying to get the, the list of nodes. So if you look at another attack path, which is, by the way, interesting, and uh, we have seen this uh, a, a real one. If you are someone adopted Kubernetes early days, there was no concept of RBAC. Right? So if someone get into the uh, service account, basically you are God, like service cluster admin, which were, uh, by the way, got exploited in uh, besides a uh, conference CTF, uh, which is basically they were trying to run the CTF in Kubernetes cluster. Someone basically got the cluster admin, basically entire CTF is over. Basically you got the cluster admin, right? So then what we are trying to do is we leverage this service account token, which is basically a JWT token at the end, right? So we kind of use this simple JWT token, like I'm just double checking, right? If it is what kind of things has. So it's a simple uh, core app service account and it has a bunch of privileges. And I'm just trying to use this service account to see what kind of privileges I have. Right, so I'm just trying to uh, get some of the text rather than me typing every time. So what I'm trying to do here is basically I'm mounting the API server, which I'm going to talk, and uh, what is the service account, and which namespace I am in, and uh, what is the certificate file and the token. That's it, right? So basically I exported all these things, and I basically run the simple curl command to basically can get the namespaces, right? Or uh, now can I talk to the API server? Looks like the service account token is working fine, right? So now what I'm trying to do is rather than just like going and uh, triggering namespaces and can I get a pods or something? So I will also go ahead and ask the API server with these credentials, can I able to create a, a simple pod using a backdoor? Right. So what I'm going to do now here is, if you look at this, so I'm just creating a pod rather than ML files. I'm just using the JSON because I had to make a curl request to the API server. So basically converted all your ML into JSON. And one interesting thing which you see here is I'm doing is I'm going to replace the node selector and the node which I wanted to land as attacker. So what it helps me to do is uh, basically it helps me to basically go rather than and uh, uh, land in the same node every time, which I have attack. So I wanted to land in the node which I wanted to take over, right? So I'm just deploying a backdoor pod, which gives me again reverse shell in another node, which I wanted to laterally move, right? So if you just put that here, so I will go ahead and update that node which we just wanted to land, and I'll go ahead and make a same call request because I have all the credentials to talk to the API server, and uh, I have pretty much access to deploy a pod, right? And uh, once you see this, it's pretty much Deployed, it's in pending state, and uh, I just wanted to double check, so I'll go back to again, because I, in a host system, I have access, so I'll go ahead and run kubectl get pods, maybe. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to uh, set the path. Okay, it's not in the default namespace, because the pod is by default in the core app namespace. You can see the backdoor pod got deployed. So. That is not interesting, but we wanted to know which node it is deployed, right? So if you just do dash uh, wide, you can see this, it got deployed in the ZI, which means basically we give a host privileged, privileged access, so pretty much you are got on another route, like which means you literally move to another node and you have a route on the host system. 
right so this is pretty much you've seen the kill chain like we started from initial discovery exec escape move on to the different nodes so there are a bunch of attacks you can even literally move without network security policies if there are no network security policies as you already know like you can basically talk to any of the services this is one of the widely exploited things like right people just go and like grab internal services because they are not protected with mtls or maybe they just think that it is namespace bounded or logically segregated right so this is very common as well so now what we are trying to do is we will also looking up at another way. So there is a very old concept called static pods in Kubernetes uh, before daemon sets were not like really in the Kubernetes. So this is used to be helpful for running daemon set, which means each node should run one of the node container, like for example, logging or something. So they used to use static pods when there was no daemon set. So still the future is there. I think this is recently flagged as well. So they are going to deprecate or something. So which is basically I'm trying to leverage as attacker, just keep a static pod in the manifest basically even though someone trying to delete a pod basically i keep spinning up because it's coming from not api server it's coming from a static pod right no kubernetes uh, api server is controlling this as attacker i'm controlling at the host level right so full blown like a uh, like a bypass for that right so i believe i don't remember i don't want to quote so these logs might not be even available in api server if you wanted to monitor them right which means another way for attacker to hide right so this is something quite interesting and uh, uh, useful as well right i try to delay it. you can see this it's popping up because it's not a pod right it's managed by a static pod right so this is one of the again defense evasion technique or like a persistence if you want to land and keep on the in the cluster and there are a bunch of ways you can persist right the good old technique of adding your ssh key to authorized keys or cron job put a backdoor like there are a ton of techniques you wanted to persist in the in the cluster but these are not going to work in the distributed system if you look at right you just said destroy a node all these gone your backdoors so how do you keep the backdoors then in the kubernetes right so i came up with very interesting approach by the way this is i am trying to showcase another lateral movement approach before i show a cool backdoor how you can do this so there are a bunch of these most of the modern services depend on something called service metadata which is like instant metadata IP, API, right? Uh, they use some IP address called 169.254, 169.254, which is a, a PIPA IP address reserved for the, the this kind of thing, right? So as an attacker, I can even leverage these kind of metadata. By the way, this Shopify got hacked entire clusters due to the same reason, right? So there might be sensitive keys which is attached because certain nodes require these API endpoints. As an attacker, even I not only laterally move within the cluster, I can even laterally move across your cloud providers. Right? If you think about this, I'm just trying to take this uh, access key or secret key or whatever the, the credential. The, in this case, I just planted them so that you can understand the real world impact. Right? I'm just using that to get a color identity of the profile, whatever the hacker. We just steal the tokens. Pretty much you have access to the, your AWS now, whatever the credentials has the permission. Right? So you literally moving across the cloud, not just Kubernetes you are impacting now. Right? So think about these kind of attacks at scale. Like these are, by the way, not saying there is a threat model. This could be possible. This is a real world hack I'm showing you live, right? So not live, sorry, recorded, sorry for that. So yeah, there are a bunch of attacks you can do. If you think about exfiltration, as I said, right? That is one of the way you can steal, but there is a attackers behind something like crypto miners. Like if you look at the previous one, I was sorry, I think I just uh, moved fast. So what I wanted to show was uh, previous one, uh, how you can basically make uh, uh, more resource hijacking if you don't have resource limits and uh, limit rangers, those kind of things, right? As an attacker, if I run crypto miner, like I'm just trying to run a stress ng to show the same rather than mining my own uh, nodes, right? So I'm just saying here, you see the huge memory uh, thing like uh, you can see a lot of memory get consumed like uh, 6 MB now you see started almost getting the so much heat right so basically uh, crypto miners are got very smart by the way these days you can even allocate how much C, C group resources you want so that you don't get detected by your commercial vendors so some of them got very very fancy especially crypto miners right uh, yeah this is another way you can basically do so this is what I wanted to show loss attacks sorry for taking too much time but yeah this is something basically uh, how you do Kubernetes style backdoors right because those are not persistent you want to be distributed right so this is something I'm leveraging the Kubernetes native feature called cron job which means you basically spin up a cron job and thinking like a system job like Cilium or something like masquerading to avoid defense and deploying in a cube system namespace which means it's a, the way most of the stuff happens 
And if you see some interesting things I'm doing is uh, some of them is concurrency and the parallelism. I'll explain them. So what I'm trying to do is basically I uh, just setting up a attacker IP. Basically, I'm grabbing my attacker box IP. So this is the IP I wanted to get a reverse shell every time. Right. So I'll go ahead and uh, create a simple container and I'm going to run a NC to get a shell back. Uh, then basically I'm going to run a, a listener each time. I'll go ahead and ap apply this job as a backdoor. Basically, you see the pods and you already got the connection back, which means you have a reverse shell for your container all the time. Even though someone deletes the pod, it will get upstream. It's a very persistent shell. Think of this. Even Kubernetes nodes get deleted, you still have a shell. Even because that's a part of Kubernetes native, not part of node, right? Even if you upgrade the cluster, you have a shell back because it's a very persistent. So there are a ton of attacks. I think these are some of them I just showcased from some of the experience of me uh, hacking some of the clusters, right? So I just wanted to stop here because I can keep talking and hacking. So let's go back to some of the things where we uh, wanted to talk, right? Because we are almost running out of time also, right? So, oh, sorry. I don't want to play this again. Yeah, because you've seen a lot of uh, the, the interesting hacks, right? Uh, I don't know if anything you learned, but yeah, it was definitely fun for me to hack them. So how can you practice them, right? So that you can go and protect these clusters or even like see if you have these kind of vulnerabilities. So that's the whole uh, education piece is missing, at least some of the things we have seen in the real world, right? So that is where I wanted to introduce to you a project called Kubernetes Goat which is one of the fun project I have created, basically, which has bunch of intentionally vulnerabilities like I have shown hacks and uh, the real world security tools also like Cilium Tetragon or Falco, Kyverno, right? All of the CNCF tools, right? So how you can use these kind of security things to learn and play in a real world like just like an, a hacker, right? So you can able to understand and see how you can hack and protect these clusters, right? By the very big disclaimer, please do not run this in your production workloads. This has bunch of vulnerabilities as you've seen. Basically, you are giving me a backdoor tomorrow to hack your cluster, right? So please do not ever run on your production clusters, right? So, okay. Okay, this all looks fancy. Maybe I am not a security person. Can I still use Kubernetes Goat, right? So definitely it's catered to a bunch of people. Like if you are someone coming from hackers background, like attackers or a team, you can just learn security or offensive game of the Kubernetes, right? Or CNCF side. And someone defend us, you can be able to learn these techniques so that you can able to defend or prevent what kind of locks to look, what kind of attacks to detect, right? If you are someone completely developers or DevOps team, so you can also learn and understand a simple misconfiguration of node port, this all started, right? You could have made that, all of this could have prevented or maybe some of those, right? So even I have seen it is adopted by companies like Microsoft Defenders Research. They use Kubernetes goes to test their product is really working, right? So they are able to detect this attack. So we have seen a really good use cases. Uh, these are a bunch of the scenarios you can learn and play in Kubernetes code. We have 22 scenarios of live hacking and defense. So you can able to go and try out yourself and uh, learn the Kubernetes security, right? So how can I set up? Definitely, you can go ahead and spin up any of the cluster, even including K3S or Kind, you can able to run up and running with the Kubernetes code project, right? So as simple as you just go ahead and git clone and uh, bash and deploy, oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, you should be able to see these parts up and running. Uh, uh, this is the home page, how you get, like basically you have a simple home page to help you guide. So one of the biggest lack of thing in the industry is documentation. So that is what we focused on, at least when building a project, right? So someone like you basically can head over to a project called Kubernetes Goat. This is the welcome page, by the way. I'm trying to find my mouse. Yeah. So you basically pretty much have fantastic documentation, like why the project is created, getting started, how you can do, and uh, how you can able to, before even learn Kubernetes, how you can learn Kubernetes, and some of the examples, and uh, also some of the cheat sheets of the commands, and uh, also some of the mapping to OWASP top 10, some of the real world practices and which scenario you can play so that you can able to fix the overlay permits you are back, right? So it also maps back to a very popular framework called Mitre, like uh, the kill chain of the cyber kill chain, right? Like how they use uh, the attack framework, right? So a bunch of these scenarios are available. So you can also look at each scenario. So we have like, for example, container escape, right? So if you click on the scenario, so you can able to have each and every detailed attack, right? Okay, now I just showed, if you look at, we got a container access, we use ch root, you escaped out of the container and you use the kubelet config, you escape to another lateral node. So you have pretty much step-by-step -step guidance, like how we can attack and what are the goals, some of the fun hints, and some of the solutions walk through as well. So 
pretty much it's uh, like a fancy tool right so i would highly recommend to give it a try and we have some examples with even tetragon right how you can detect certain attacks or like what are the things we have seen in real world and maybe you can go and fix these things all right so and we also had like a bunch of reports from the open source tools how they can detect these attacks in real world and can they detect it or what kind of things missing as well so yeah give it a try and uh, it's pretty much uh, you we have a discord as well if someone wanted to try it out and uh, pretty much it has a bunch of feedback from the community at least uh, these are the things so this is one thing i wanted to uh, give it back to the community so that you can go back and learn and uh, useful to practice and as i said these are some of the mappings and uh, if you wanted to explore you can go and check out this project and uh, repository yeah by the way this is a fun talk from microsoft how they use kubernetes go to uh, basically test the defender is working really or not uh, detecting these attacks in microsoft azure cloud by the bunch of the people use as well like secure defenders so some of the key takeaways because almost we are end of the talk sorry for that uh, a lot of gaps in the knowledge that is one of the biggest gap in security industry and even in the modern ecosystem right there is ton of tools and technologies coming out day in and day out so we need to understand the technology to solve the security problems and definitely you need to uh, see the maturity model right you, the tool can be like super uh, good but it may not be matured from security point of view right so there is lots of uh, resources and frameworks and tools but they may not be practical enough so you need to see uh, is it really adding value or making an impact so basically think like a hacker just go defend like a, a, the security person right so this is pretty much we have uh, please spread the love of kubernetes god with the, the people at least your team and other people and i got some of the cool stickers of the kubernetes god uh, very limited edition <laughs> by the way please grab them i will be here or outside anywhere you can find me and uh, with that thank you so much